All right, guys. A short video just to answer the questions about the modifications I've done to my V6 Adventure. Just a quick short story in case you're new to the channel. Uh, these are made between uh, 2003 and 2006 by Holden. They came in both V6 and V8 variants. I've got a V6 one and I've been using a V6 one off road for about five to six years now. I have had the V8 ones, but I'll go into that a little bit um, shortly as to why I ended up choosing a V6. Now, performance wise, this thing's pretty stock, um, but I have done probably more mods to camping out of this than I have actually to the performance of the car. If you want to see the mods I've done inside um, the vehicle and um, how I use it to camp out of, there's a video in the top right hand corner now you can check out. Now, coming straight into this, um, this Adventure sits on two inches, two inches of extra lift than standard, and I have got spaces as well um, at the springs, give it a, uh, I think 10 mil more on top of that. But performance wise, Engines your standard uh, high feature V6 190 kilowatt engine, which comes in your standard Commodore, your Calais, your SV6, um, in the same era that this came out in. The only mod I've done here is added uh, Mace Engineering um, spaces here, 25 mil spaces, which basically what that does is it separates the intake um, from the engine, and then this unit here stays significantly cooler than the engine. Because in a normal operation, what will happen is that the engine gets hot this gets hot with it and then when your air comes in through your intake it gets warmed up before it goes in um, to be fired up and that in turn you lose power out of it um, that's actually why people get uh, cold air intakes at the front because it cools the air's cooler and it's cooler when it goes in this kind of does um, like it helps keep that air cool and along with my snorkel install which i pretty much use a 65 series hilux snorkel there's a video in the top uh corner now if you want to See that install for the snorkel. That is probably one of the first five mods I would say if you're going to get an adventure and actually take it serious off road. Um, but other than that, the rest of stock uh, battery. We just put a bigger battery in it. That battery there, I think, is a um, an NS70 Century battery, and they fit standard with no modifications. You just come a little bit close sometimes to here, but that's no problem if you've got it bolted down properly. Um, and the front of the adventure I just has a. Uh, a passive transmission cooler, um, oil cooler, it's a PWR one, and my trans fluid is still cooling through the radiator as well as that at the moment. Uh, and there is a reason for that, but um, that's in, I'll explain that a little bit in another video, I think, because it requires a bit of a detailed explanation. Um, pretty much that's really about it. They sit on 29s at the moment, the tyres. Um, exactly 20, I think they're 28 point five or something inches, which is legal standard for off-road vehicle um, to be oversized. And that's pretty much it. And the vehicle's been with me for, yeah, quite a while and 80,000 kilometers on, she's still going off-road. So I'm pretty happy about that. Now, I love the V6 um, for many reasons. There are improvements in the V6 and refinements that the V8 just doesn't have. Um, the V8, I mean, the LS1, uses an older, older older, language, computer language. So there's a lot of features like hill descent control, um, an improved cross track, which is a brake lock differential system, um, non-engine reducing. If you know what traction control is like off-road, you'll know that non-engine reducing traction control systems are a king off-road. Um, the Aventra has it. The V8 here, which this one's a recent arrival and I purchased this off um, a guy named Peter. It's a really nice bloke. I love this thing but it needs a little bit of work and this is something a project was just started. Uh, sits on, I think, the same type of lift as my V6. Runs 32 inch tires, BFGs at the moment. From what I can tell, it sounds like the engine and exhaust have been modified. So I'm actually, I've got to pull it apart so you'll have to figure that out. And I'm in the process of legalizing this back to a Victorian roadworthy standard that, that they're gonna allow me to drive and I can be inspected and checked out and there won't be any problems. So, that's coming up in the next, um, I don't know, a few months. I mean, we've got Simpson Desert happening in a month's time, so we're pretty busy here. But look, it's a beautiful vehicle, and for what it is, um, definitely a nice thing. I'm gonna give it a start up, so you, I, I don't know if everyone loves a good V8. I have a gear of what it kind of sounds like now. Pretty sure that's not what we wanted. I actually don't know how much fuel was in this, so it would be funny if this actually ran out of fuel.
I've had uh, three V8s, so including this one. The first one was the first V8 I ever, uh, first adventure I ever got, which was a V8. Then I got a, um, a second one, which is in really good condition. Um, it was a red one. You probably wouldn't have seen it on the channel very much because we didn't keep it for very long. Uh, long story, <laughs> not for this video. And then this is the third one. So, and this one sounds considerably different to all our other V8s. I mean, just giving it a bit of a squirt.